good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to say welcome to everybody tuning in online. Hey, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and stand to your feet real quickly, real quickly. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> I want to read Psalms 15. If you have Psalms 15, pull it out on your phone, open up your Bible. Psalms 15 says this, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? Those whose walk is blameless before you, those who do righteous deeds, who speak truth from their heart, whose tongues utter no slander, who does no wrong to his neighbor, who casts away, uh, excuse me, who casts not or stirs up others, who despises a vile person, but the person who fears and honors the Lord, who keeps his word even when it hurts. How many have been there before? You got to keep your word even when it hurts, right? Says this and does not change their mind. He who lends money to the poor without interest and does not accept a bribe against an innocent person. Whoever does these things shall not be shaken. Let me pray over you. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Lord, it is my prayer that as you speak to me, speak through me for the blessing and benefit of your people. In Jesus' name, shout amen. amen. Have a seat. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, worship team. So I want to talk to you today about Worship and praise. Worship and praise. Uh, yeah, worship team gets excited about that. But I got to start off with a story. So I watched the UFC fights last night. And as I was watching, I saw something pretty interesting. I was a little intrigued by. I saw a couple of fighters come out to worship music. Literally, they had worship music. And as they were coming into the ring, they were worshiping God. And then one person, right before they got into the ring, they fell to their knees, they threw their hands up into heaven, and they began to give all glory to God and to pray. And I was sitting next to the bishop, Deshaun, and I said, that is so weird. How do you go from blessing God to beating up your neighbor? I mean, somebody help me here. Like, I, I, I mean, do you just like, in Jesus' name, like, I, I, don't, I don't know how that works. And Deshaun turns it to me, does anybody here ever have that one spiritual friend? Right, they spiritualize everything. Like the reason you didn't get cheese on your burger even though you ordered it is the Lord knew you would gain weight. You ever got that one spiritual friend, right? You ever once so the bishop looks at me and he goes, Pastor, that's exactly what David did before he killed Goliath. He fell to his knees and he worshiped God and then he cut his head off. And I was like, well, aren't you spiritual? Okay. So I get it. We need to worship before we go to war or Worship is our warfare. Amen? Amen? So the other thing that I thought was really interesting, and, and I think all of my football fans can, you know, uh, sports fans can attest to this, isn't it weird not seeing anybody in the stands? Isn't that weird? Matter of fact, um, I was always taught when I played football, like, you feed off the energy, right? You feed off the energy of the crowd and of the fans, and especially when you're losing a little bit and, you know, they kind of get you back into the game and there's no fans and, you, and they try to make the sounds, you know, like, hey, that's the crowd cheering. There's no crowd. It's all fake. And, and I realized that when we get together as God's people, we create an energy when we begin to worship God that the atmosphere begins to shift and all of a sudden we might be losing, but we start winning. And when we use worship as our warfare, we begin to declare victory over all our problems, right? So I wanna walk you through the seven pillars of worship as described in the Old Testament, that's been brought over to the New Testament. So the first thing I wanna start off with is Tehelia. And the meaning is a song, it's a hymn, it's a praise of adoration, but more importantly, it's a spontaneous song that comes from the overflow of your life, the overflow of your life. Now, a classic illustration of this is in 1904, before any of us was born, there was a Welsh man who took a, a, a train to a little known city of Bala, Wales. And in 1904, he got off the train station, walked six blocks, he fell to his knees on the cobblestone. Right in the middle of town, he put his hands up to heaven and he began to sing a song from the inside depths of his soul. And this song talked about Jesus and the price he paid and the blood that washed his sin away. And all of a sudden, there was a bar across the street and a person came out of the bar with beer mug in hand. He put it down and he too began to worship. 
There was a pool hall right next door to the bar. They came out with their cue sticks and they began to worship. There were houses across the street. Women were coming out of the house with their aprons still on from cooking, and they too fell down and began to worship. All of a sudden, a revival took place. Out of one Tehillia moment, one spontaneous act of worship, this is known as the Welsh revival, that 100,000 people came to know Jesus and repent of their sins from one spontaneous song. We must understand that worship begins to shift the atmosphere, that it's more than the words that are on the screen, but it's a posture of our heart. It's a declaration of who we are and what we're all about. Matter of fact, I want to say it to you that when we sing, it is not simply an invitation to come worship with us, but rather it's a demonstration of how we worship the God who is so amazing. So if you see us begin to get excited, just you wait and see, because when we get there, it's going to be one long worship celebration. So this is merely a dress rehearsal and practice. Somebody just shout at me, we going to church, come on. Okay, so don't get too excited. So we understand that we understand that we begin this praise, and, and I love what Deuteronomy 10, 21 says, it says, he is your praise. Jesus is the originator of our tehillia, of our spontaneous worship. He is our God. He's the whole reason why we sing. Now, I want to show you a New Testament verse, a New Testament verse that encourages us, it inspires us. Paul says, and I quote, do not get drunk with wine. In other words, stop your drinking. Look at what he says, which leads to some empty pleasures. Hello. Don't look at nobody. Just look right here. 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 How'd the Bible know you was going home with somebody? Come on. Hey. Instead, in other words, do away with that, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for in everything, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to participate in our song service. This isn't us just spectating. This is participation. This is us realizing that God invites us to be a part of this song of celebration. So I want to encourage you, and I realize, and I realize that for some of us who were not raised in church, this is quite possibly our most awkward time. Like, I remember uh, when I did go to church, I went a few times, I went to a Catholic church. We didn't have a full band. It was basically, Mary, you know how many uh, Catholic people, you know what I'm talking about, ex-Catholic people, you know, it's stand up, sit down, kneel, stand up, sit down, kneel, stand up, sit down, kneel, and ready for this, and also with you. That was good, huh? Need a little deeper, you, right? And so when I went into Christian church, I was like this, what are they doing? What are they doing? And then I started thinking, will they do requests? <laughs> Can I give a request? And so it was really awkward for me. And it was the most awkward 20, 25 minutes of the whole time. And, and I remember going in with my best friend and I'd just stand there. And then I'd look, I'd stand there and other people were clapping. And I was like, why are they clapping? And it was, I get it. But the longer I was in church, the more that worship began to be my favorite part of church. Now I started getting like you. I started walking in and be like, you going to sing my favorite song today? You know who you are? Because you get mad when we don't sing it. Like we knew it's what you wanted to hear when you walked in. I'm saying, you know, church people are mean about it. Church people are mean about their worship music. Well, you didn't sing my song. I didn't know it was your song. I really didn't. You know, it's like we do an all request show here. It's not how it works. But now it's become my favorite part. And I love it because it's a spontaneous song of worship that is in our heart. I love what Psalms 22.3 says. But you are holy, O God, enthroned in our praises. In other words, when we have a spontaneous song in our heart, you are enthroned over all of Israel. You are the center of our universe. Now I realize this is hard for some of us to even begin to say because we don't have a song in our heart. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of instruction, a little bit of homework, okay? If you wanna have a song in your heart, you've got to change the radio station. 
okay? And, 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 and I know them all. I know them all. You got to turn it off 97.9. Got to get it off 103.7. You got to get off 97.1. You got to get off 94.9, 105.1. I can keep going all day, guys. I can go all day, okay? But you got to change the radio station because you can't worship out what you haven't worshiped in. You can't do it. So, the Bible's very clear. It says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of our God. So, I want to leave you with this when it comes to the worship part, the Tehillia part. It is a verb. It is an action. So, push yourself. Say, next week when I show up, I'm actually going to put my hands together, Okay? And for some of you, you know, you might even start a little sway. You never know. You might be sitting next to your future spouse. On both sides. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Sorry. So I want to see if you're paying attention. Okay. Next word. Moving right along. This is the Hebrew word shavach. And this word literally means to calm, to soothe. But its physical expression is to shout. It's to shout. And when we talk about this, it is so important to understand that some of us, some of us have been attacking things a little too quiet. We've been attacking things a little too bit, uh, you know, uh, fearful and and intrepidatiously. But what we need to do is we need to be aggressive. We need to take authority over it. Now, I don't know about you, but are there any other loud people in the house? You just loud, you just shout all the time. So I just want you to know, true story, my wife informs me that I'm always loud. Matter of fact, true story, just the other day, I called her, and she literally interrupts me in the middle of my sins, and she goes, why are you shouting at me? (laughs) To which I shouted, I'm not shouting at you. So, (laughs) this this is so bad that we had to develop a little word. So when I'm out in public, she can give me a word to let her know that I'm shouting. And she goes, babe, your word is octane. I'm like a car, apparently. I need octane. She goes, so now when I call and I'm just really excited, she'll go, honey, you're using too much octane. And I'm like, it's not octane. I promise you, I'm excited. I'm not mad. And so I realized that shouting is just who I am, but I feel like it's a biblical thing. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. So it says this in 1 Chronicles 16, 35. And say, save us, O God. So look at what he's saying. Say this. But he's literally going to tell you to shout it. Save us, O God. Let us see your salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles. In other words, they're enemies. And we will give thanks. This is another word, yada. And we'll go over it next week. To your holy name, to triumph. To shout unto God with the voice of victory so that you may praise him with the tehillah, to with a special spontaneous song. So we can shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I think this is so important. Jesus himself used it when he was, when he was sleeping in the boat and the boat was being rocked back and forth and it was being beaten up. The disciples woke him up and he shouted He shouted and he commanded the winds and the waves to calm and to cease. Now watch this. Now watch this. We often shout to take authority over something. I'm going to give you a real life confession. I'm not, I'm I'm scared of dogs. Is anybody else scared of dogs? I mean, I feel like I'm a good meal. Like this leg right here, I mean like this is, this is, they, they want to bite. That's all there is to it. And so my wife, true story, my wife and I were walking and there was a dog, like this big old husky coming and it at us, like German shepherd husky, it was just big. And I, I said, babe, we need to start running. She goes, we're not running. I go, I'm running. You ain't running, but I'm running. I'm like, I'm out of here. She goes, no, you need to take authority over it. And so I did what you should do. Bless God, highly favored woman of God, you go do it. You show me how it's done. I stood behind her and I began to pray for her. (laughs) Father, in the name of Jesus. Hey, at least I prayed. My wife goes straight up to that dog. She goes, stop. 
you. And I was like, yeah, you, yeah, stop. <laughs> then she put her foot down. She goes, go home. And the dog started taking off. And I was like, yeah, go home, sucker. I was going to tear you up. Get out of here. She took authority. Then she looked at me. She goes, now you try. No, I'm good. I mean, he already gone anyway. I'm good. You have to take authority. Think about it. When, when, when we feel scared, we take authority. Just go walk in a dark room. See if you don't start shouting in the name of Jesus. Start speaking in tongues. Start pleading the blood. You take authority. It's in that shout that you take authority. And watch this, there's a reason for this. The Bible says that we're to teach one generation to the next. The shouts of praise, the shavak, to declare the mighty works of God. This is what we teach our kids. Kids, some things are not gonna come out through human intellect. Some things you can't reason out. Some things you're going to have to shout about. And you're going to have to take authority over the devil. You're going to have to walk into your room, get into your closet, and you're going to have to call on heaven to touch earth. I love what it says in Psalms 89, 9 in the King James. Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise. Thou stillest them with the shavach. You still them with a shout. I love it in Psalm 63. He says, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall, shall shout unto you. Think about it. We shout for our favorite team. We shout when our, when our favorite song comes on the radio. We shout when we go to a concert. But do you shout unto the Lord? Now, watch this. This is a true story. This is going to come up on the board. This is probably one of the most famous stories of people shouting. I think we're all familiar with it. So it says, so the people shouted, this is Joshua at the walls, so uh, walls of Jericho. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city of every man straight before them, and they took the city. Their shout was their weapon. Church, I'm telling you right now, this is how we find our victory. This is what we are to do. We are to proclaim that the Lord is good. So here's my question. What area of your life are, do you find yourself succumbing to? Do you find yourself giving in to your anger? Do you find yourself giving in to your pride, to your lust, whatever it is? Maybe it's time you go to prayer with a shout. You put on the worship music, and you declare that you will be victorious in Jesus' name. So, last but not least, last but not least, and I'm gonna close with this. I wanna talk to you about the Hebrew word barak. And this word literally means to adore, to bless, to salute. But its physical posture is this right here. It's this right here. It's to kneel. It's to get on both knees and to pay respect and homage. It's to realize more battles are won right here than in any other way. The greatest revelations of God that he gives to man is not been through theology, but rather neology. It's time spent with the Father when nobody else is around. Pastor Chris Hodges says, a man or a woman never has far to fall when they're on their knees already. This is how we keep ourselves humble. This should be a daily routine. Shouldn't be, it doesn't have to be in front of people. It could be with just you and the Father. When you get up out of bed, you just already go ahead and kneel down. Say, God, I'm gonna take my rightful position while you're in your rightful position, which is enthroned in heaven. And I think this is so important that we understand that this is our posture of worship. This is how we get victory. I love Psalms 95, six says this, oh come and let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. You know, it was interesting. Yesterday, I was tuning in to some, some preachers preach and there was this person, so good. I mean, their, their words were so smooth. I'm talking so cool. Their enunciation and communication skills, I mean, would rival any TED talk. It was so good. I mean, just 
slice and dice and the tapestry of how they weave the words together and the stories, I mean, you would just be impressed. But I looked at my wife and I said this, but it was absent of anointing. There was no conviction behind what they were preaching. It was smooth talk. There was no demonstration of the power. There was no transformation from the spirit. See, I, I, think our, I, I, think, I think people are getting tired of coming into church and leaving church all the same. I think people are getting tired of smooth talk. What they want is a demonstration of power. What they need is a Shavak. What they need is a Tehillah. What they need is a Barak. What they need is transformative power of God changing your lives, changing marriages, changing us as parents. What we need is Jesus to come and bring heaven to touch earth. We don't need another talk. We need to be stirred to change. Can I show you something? This is our Barach moment. It says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. <clears throat> Therefore, you and me, we need to humble ourselves. See, we have two options. Either we humble ourselves or God will humble you. I don't know about you, Option two don't sound very good. I'd rather I humble myself. I'd rather take this posture and say, God, I don't got it all together. God, I desperately need you. He said what? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in the due time, he will raise you up. Maybe you've been approaching your situation all wrong. Maybe you've been trying to convince somebody, trying to reason with somebody, Try, trying to get them to change, but maybe what you should be doing is getting on your knees and saying, God, this battle's not mine, it is yours, and I hand it over to you, and I give it to you, and I surrender to you, and God, I know you will fight for me, not fight with me. Church, I have to close with this. I'm not saying it's a prophetic word, However, I do feel it's got a prophetic moment. So mom and dad, aunts and uncles, ninos and ninas, all of you, parental, parental figures, just please, just three minutes, hear me. Just three minutes. I want to tie this all together. I got here on part two of Back to Basics, Loving God with Our Worship. Let me tell you how I got here. I realized that next weekend it'll be October, the first of October. First weekend of October, literally. I mean, this is it, countdown to Christmas, y'all, it's over. Less than 100 days, right? Follow me. That means we'll have spent two thirds of this year, two thirds of this year, with most people. Over, they say over 70% of Christians still haven't been back to church, no joke. Two thirds of the year. That's not what concerned me. Can I, can I just share my heart real quick? What concerned me is last week, there was this beautiful picture, little video somebody took of their five-year-old child just with their hands raised, worshiping the Lord. And you could tell he really didn't know the lyrics. He just wanted to worship Jesus. It was this Tahelia moment. He just was worshiping. And I felt like the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and I just want to share this with you. And he said, if we're not careful, 2020 will be known as the gap year. As the year where kids weren't in church worshiping the Lord in an atmosphere where the glory of God and heaven touches earth, where there's, a, where there's a group of people who got one thing on our mind, and it's to worship God that if we're not careful, there's going to be a gap year in their spiritual life. There's going to be a, a, a blip on their spiritual growth where they weren't in the house of God, where they weren't in the presence of God, where they weren't in, in, encapsulated in the, in the worship and the praise that comes when God's people get together, that there was no shout of victory, that there was no Barak of Tehillia moments where there was a spontaneous song where they could just lift their hands and be caught up in the presence of an almighty holy God, where they get a glimpse of heaven, an audition of what they'll be doing in eternity, church. 
I said not on my watch. May we feel this atmosphere. May we feel it with the glory of God. Here's my concern. These kids know every TikTok dance. They know every song that's coming out, every new challenge. But this is what matters because this is eternity right here, right now. Would you stand to your feet? Would we model for them that this is what it's all about? May we shout to God with the voice of victory. May we understand that there's a miracle in God's house ready to break loose. Close your eyes. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on. Let's sing it. And when we lift our voice and shout. Come on, church. When